Well, hello there. We're going to have a look at the very exciting subject of transformations of functions, the first of the series, which is dilations. So let's have a look at that. What is a dilation, guys? What do you think it might be? Well, it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Either way, from the x-axis or from the y-axis. It can be from either. For a dilation from the x-axis, I want you to imagine a rubber band thumbtacked to the x-axis, all right? Now, basically, if you mark an xy point on the rubber band with when the rubber band is attached to the x-axis, then stretch or dilate the rubber band upwards or downwards, then you will see that every point on that rubber band, every one that you've marked, you'll see very clearly, it basically gets stretched upwards or downwards according to the amount of the stretch. So that's what we're doing. Dilation is a great big elastic band or rubber band stretching anchored at the x-axis or the y-axis. So if you were thinking about, say, a dilation of a factor of 2 away from the x-axis, right, Let's have a look. There's a point, and here's our little anchor point here, right? Now that point there, x and y, we're going to stretch that by a factor of 2. Look at my nice little animation. There it goes. There it is. You see that? That's where you end up. So the, at the x-axis is the anchor point for stretching, and the stretching is both up and down. Both of them, up and down from the x-axis. So that's the bit you've got to get your head around. It's basically stretching upwards from the x-axis and downwards from the x-axis, both of them. Yeah. Okay, now this is the bit we need to get our head around. Compressions, compressions. Well, you wouldn't really call them a stretch, would you? But they're kind of like in the same concept, right? A compression is sort of like a, a bunching up. So a compression towards the x-axis is also considered to be quote-unquote dilations, but they are basically expressed as dilations by a fractional amount. So basically, compressing for, uh, vertically towards the x-axis by a factor of 2, in other words, if you're halving every value of um, y for a given value of x, or what, you know, do you know what I mean? You're basically scrunching everything up into half its height that's referred to as a dilation of a factor of half from the x-axis okay so that a vertical line from the x-axis to a given point is only half as long as it was before the dilation okay take a deep breath ready for some more good now this is a dilation of a factor of three away from the y-axis now you have a look at that and you tell me what you think it might be where it might go to now we're going away from the y-axis now, so that's a negative x, that point, that x value is negative, y value is positive, we're going to stretch away from the y-axis, so that means we're going to do this, boom, 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 like that, and that's where it's going to go. Do you see that? Well, I'm glad you do. Now, in this example, yes, x is negative, so 3x is also negative, okay? That's uh, what I was just saying before. So the y-axis is now the anchor point for stretching, and the stretching is both left and right of the y-axis. So if you had a point to the right of the y-axis, that would be stretched over to the right. Yes, if it's to the left of the y-axis, it's going to be stretched over to the left. Yes, that's right, because some functions have um, some to the left and some to the right, don't they? Yes, yeah, so that's what you've got to sort of think. Yeah, the y-axis is the anchor man. So compressions, uh, uh, yes, so similarly, compression, compressions towards the y-axis are also considered to be dilations, but they, as with uh, this reasoning up here for the x-axis, they're also uh, considered to be dilations by a fractional amount. E.g., express, uh, express, oh, compressing, I'm sorry, compressing horizontally towards the y-axis by a factor of 2 is referred to as a dilation of a factor of half, because it goes into half its normal length from the y-axis. Yes, so, so that a horizontal line from the y-axis to a given point is only half as long as it was before the dilation. Yes, clear as mud? No, no, I can, I can tell that you've got it. Now, this is a very interesting little point here I want to um, get you to think about. Dilations from which axis? Yes, dilations from which axis? Well, let me explain. When looking at the 
end result of a dilation, it can sometimes be expressed, and I say sometimes be expressed, as either a dilation from the x-axis or from the y-axis. And the result of each of these will be exactly the same. Now, this sounds really, really weird, but let me show you. If I had y equals x and transformed it to the function y equal to 2x, yeah? Okay, let's just draw a picture of that. Yeah, you can see that. Here's, here's your y equals x. Let's fix that up. And that's y equals 2x, yeah? All right, now, let me just pick a point on the... Um, if I picked a point on the line y equals x, it would make it clearer what I'm talking about here. The transformation basically required to get from y equals x to y equals 2x could be described as... First of all, it could be described as a dilation of a factor of 2 from the x-axis. Do you see that? Now, this point here, this point here is mapping or morphing or changing into this point here, right? On that red curve, right? And if you did that similarly to every single point along this black line, basically make it twice as high as it was before, you will map into that red line because this black line is a continuous function you'll map you'll basically do a mapping one for one of all the points on the black line to all the corresponding points vertically above on the red line at twice the height of what they are on the black line yeah okay good eg one one would go to one two yeah twice as high or now here comes the or you can consider it also to be a dilation of a factor of a half from the y-axis, in other words, a half going into half its width its or its horizontal length uh, from the y-axis. Now, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? But see, that if that one mapped to there, and then similarly every point on this black line mapped similarly to its corresponding point at half the length from the y-axis horizontally, well, it's a different kind of mapping. These points are mapping to a different point. In this case, they were going up. In this case, they're going in towards the y-axis. But the result, ladies and gentlemen, the result after every single point on that black line maps to its corresponding point on the red line is exactly the same curve, although the, the, the mappings, the transformation route that they took was completely different. Okay, So you could go from 1, 1 to a half 1. And so, yes, I've summarised that down there to say that individual points on the original curve may be transformed to different locations on the transformed curve but collectively collectively because they're on a continuous curve the black line's continuous no breaks in it collectively they transform to make the same the same transformed function well that's headline news isn't it it's pretty incredible but that's the way it goes so both transformations, A and B, provide the same result, which is Y equals 2X. Now, this is, <laughs> this is a source of enormous confusion for students, but it's very simple. There's more than one way to get to the end result. You know, they say that all roads lead to Rome. Well, they used to. But that's the way. All roads, all roads lead to, in this case, those two roads lead to the red curve. Different roads, same destination. Amazing, eh? Now let's do some calculations uh, using the recommended logical method. Now this is my this is my Wolfman logical method. I teach this because I think it's easy to understand and it's very logical. There's another method called the intuitive learned method, functions based method, which I'll do later in this presentation. I don't recommend it, but a lot of teachers do teach it because it's quick and easy and it does get you results fast. But if you do anything out of left field, it can go pretty haywire. Okay, because it's not logical to me. It's just a learned technique. Anyway, enough rabbiting on. There are two types of calculations you will encounter, guys. There are two types. I call them forwards and backwards. The forwards is where you are given the original function and the transformations required, and you have to come up with the transformed end result function. That's forwards, right? Going forward from the original function plus the steps to get the final result. E.g., f of x equals x squared to determine the equation for the image of f of x after a dilation of a factor of 3 from the x-axis, a dilation of a factor of 3 from the y-axis, okay? Now, let's go with this. Let's go with this, and I'll show you how I do it, okay? Then we'll do backwards after the forwards, right? But I'm just going to show you how to do this now. In part A, dilation of a factor of 3 from the x-axis, let's draw it. So from the x, where are we going, guys? Where are we going? 
Yes, that's where we're going. We're going up to x, 3x, from the x, or three x, 3y, sorry, from the x-axis, yes? So that point x, y maps to x and 3y. And I call that end result x prime, y prime, or x dash, y dashed, which is the transformed point, all right? Now, so now we just set it all out like this. So we're saying that if y equals f of x, is x squared, and y dashed equals 3y, because you can see from down here that it is, they're the same thing, y dashed is 3y, and x dashed equals x, we, trans we, we basically make x and y the subject. We make x and y, y the subject from this equation here, we make x the subject from this equation here, and what are we going to do now? Well, don't worry, I'll show you what to do. We're going to take this equation here, and we're going to substitute our x and y values into this equation here. So x is this, and, oops a daisy, x is this as a subject, y is this. We're going to put them into up here. And you watch what happens. You just watch. So y dashed over 3, which is what y is, equals f of x dash, because x dash is what x is, equals x dash squared, because x dash is what x is, and there's, there's, now this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the transformed function. Now, we solve it for y dashed, right? So y dashed is 3f of x dashed, which is 3x dashed squared. That is the transformed function. That's logical, it's very coherent, and very straightforward. Now, you always solve it for y dash, by the way. You always solve it for y dash. Now, it looks a bit weird because it's like, you know, two equal signs, but that's all right. This is just to show you what the what happened to the original f of x. It's three times, um, three times f of x, and it's this. Now, what we do now is we drop the dashes for the final step because it is now morphed off into the new transformed function. We don't need the x dashes anymore, and we say the image is, the image is, y dashed, or the image is 3 times f of x, which is 3x squared. Okay? Get it. Do you get it? If you don't get it, you'll have to go back and have another look. But it's pretty straightforward. It's a, it's a, it's a logical te technique, and I like it. If you use it, you won't go wrong. It's a little bit slower than the learn technique, but, oh, gee, you know, it's better to go a little bit slower and don't make any mistakes and go nice and fast and mess it up, isn't it? Yes, NB, do not write f of x equals 3x squared. No, the new transformed function is not f of x because f of x is x squared. Now, if you write that in the exam, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, right? This is the new function. So you write it like this, or you write y equals 3x squared is, is, a, is adequate, but not f of x because that's reserved for the original function. The new transformed function is either y equals 3x squared or 3 f of x equals 3x squared. Have I made that perfectly clear? I hope so. Now, this is part b now, same technique, and we're only going to do a dilation of a factor of 3 from the y-axis, all right? From the y-axis. So which way are we going to go, guys? Yeah, we're going to go horizontally over to the right, like that, yes? And it becomes the x value is what changes, so it becomes 3x and y. Now, same procedure x, y goes to 3x and y, and that's the final finished point, x dashed, y dashed, which is the transform point. Now I'm going to do exactly the same as I did on the previous screen. So if y equaled f of x equals x squared, okay, that's the equation we're going to sub into in a minute. Now we know that x dashed equals 3x, y dashed equals y, now we're going to make x and y the subject, where they are, and we're going to substitute for that x and y, my oh my, into here. And we're going to get a magnificent result. A magnificent result. We sub for x and y into that, and what do we get? Yes, that's what we get. That's uh, y is the same as y dashed. x is the same as x dashed over 3. And x is the same as x dashed over 3. So that is... Now we're going to drop the dashes, I think. Yes, drop the dashes for the final, final, final image function result. And she be... Uh, we're going to say f of x over 3 equals x squared over 9. That is our final transformed function. And please, as I said, don't go putting f of x. Because it ain't f of x, guys. f of x is this one. You're confusing things if you put that. 
Lots of students do. They just, they're very slack with their notation and they suffer for it in exams with marks. So that's that. Yes, again, be very careful with your notation. f of x equals x squared over 9 is incorrect. You can't put that. There's no way you can put that. Otherwise, you're going to be wrong. <laughs> you don't want to be wrong, do you? No, that's true. Now, uh, that's correct. That's correct. That's all right. y equals x squared over 9 is correct. That's fine. You can put that. Uh, the image, now, this is, um, what, uh, oh, sorry. oh, yes, now that is, do you know, that, that looks right, that looks right, but it's wrong. And do you know why it's wrong? Do you know why that's wrong? I'll tell you why it's wrong. Because the original question asked for an equation. Did you see that, that word there, equation? Now, the reason that's wrong, even though what you've said is completely logically correct, you haven't written an equation. So that's why. You've got to be careful. If they say an equation, you better have an equal sign in it. Otherwise, it's wrong. Isn't there a lot to be thinking of here? It's full of traps, isn't it? Yeah, the question asks for an, for an equation, so you've got to have an equal sign. Now, what's this? Backwards now. We're going to go backwards. You're ready for the backwards. All right, let's get going. In backwards, you are given the original and the transform. So you're given the original and the end function, right? And you've got to work out what the transformations were, which were applied to get the to the to the to the end product, right? From the original, right? Do you get do you get that? Yes, I call it backwards because you've got to work out what the steps were, what the recipe was to get the end result. Now, okay, what do we got? Determine the factor of dilation when the graph of y equals root 5x is obtained by dilating the graph of y equals root x. All right. Now, this is pretty easy stuff, guys, because what you do is you... St uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. From the x-axis, from the y-axis. Now, this is, a, this is a case where the dilation can be considered... Actually, it can, be said, it, it can be considered as having been from either the x or the y axis, as this thing denotes. Now, remember a few screens ago I was saying that, you know, different mappings can get you the same result. One was a horizontal mapping, one was a vertical mapping. Well, this is exactly the scenario here. In this case, it can be considered as something doing something horizontal and something vertical in the translating that you're doing, in the mapping from each point on the original to each point on the final one. Okay, let's press on. Now, this is A, from the x-axis, right? From the x-axis, and we are going like that, right? Away from the x-axis, yes? That's what we're doing. Now, what you do, yeah, hence Y is going to be changed. Y is going to be changed. Do you see that? You've got to get that concept. And by the way, do you notice how I love drawing pictures? Pictures just clarify your head so you're not sitting around in a fog thinking, I don't know what to do. Um, so draw a picture. Now we proceed with the backwards calculation by putting each equation in what I call equivalent form where all of the extra terms in the, in, the, um, in the transformed equation, they have to belong to an either an x or a y. I'll explain in a minute. But in, in, in this case, the transformation in, in case A, which we're doing now, the transformation affects the y. So we are going to write the transformed equation with the extra term belonging to the y. Let me show you. We've got that original, that original untransformed equation, haven't we? Y equals root x. Now, here's the new one. Now, basically what I've done there is I've split that root 5. I've called that root 5 times root x, right? Which is perfectly valid to do that. And I've basically just swapped that root, divided both sides by root 5, so that, that there, the transform, that, that factor of root 5 is affecting the y term, right? That's what I'm doing because this is what happened in this instance. Away from the x-axis means it's affecting the y, doesn't it? Right, now you watch this. You watch this. This is like very, very neat. Now we basically, we equate like terms. We equate equivalent terms. So you look at those two equations and we say that y dashed over root 5 is, is equal to y and we say that therefore y dashed is root 5 y. We also say that x dashed is the same as x. If you look at those two equations, you'll see that that's true. Yes? Yes, you got it? Good. Okay, now, therefore, look guys, we're saying that this 
to get to get to y dashed you had to multiply the y by a factor of root 5 that's what you have to do now that is a dilation of a factor of root 5 away from the x axis right going upwards right if y gets in gets stretched by a factor of root 5 it's going away from the x axis so that's the way you write it okay okay how are you going yes this is a good technique i recommend it highly to you now what are we doing now? Oh, yes, we're, doing it. we're going to do part B now. Here's part B for you and me. Fills us with glee. Now, from the Y, come on, let's do our little picture now. From the Y, we're going to go like that, aren't we? Away from the Y axis. So we're going to affect the X this time. Good. The X has changed. Now, putting the original and transformed functions in equivalent form so that the extra term now belongs to the X in the transform function because that's what's being affected, right? Um, we're going to put dashes on the x and the y in the transform function, yes, so we don't get ourselves confused. So we've got here, the original is y equals root x and the transformed one is y dashed equals the square root of 5x dashed, right? Now, you see that 5 is sitting near the x now. It's, I'm making it belong to the x, right, instead of the y as in the previous example. Now, we're going to equate equivalent terms, right? Here we go. y dashed equals y and 5x dashed equals x, right? Right? Do you get that? So therefore, x dashed is x over 5. That'll keep us alive. And therefore, if the, if the x Basically, to get from x to x dashed, you've got to divide the x by 5. Okay, squash it up into a fifth of its size, right? Which basically means a dilation of a factor of a fifth from the y-axis, right? In other words, from the y-axis as the reference axis, it's being squashed towards the y-axis, right? Into a fifth of its original size, right? In the x direction, but from the y axis. Do you get it? Come on, yes you do, I think you do. Otherwise if you don't you just have to have another think about that. Turn me off and have a think about it and I'm sure it'll become clear. Now a clarification on the backwards technique. Hmm, what could this possibly be? Well, as previously mentioned, we proceed with the backwards calculation by putting each equation in equivalent form so that all extra terms are belonging to either an x or a y. Now, with simple linear functions, it's very flexible as to how this is approached, but with more complicated functions, it gets to be pretty obvious which way you really should do it. But sometimes, with very simple, straightforward functions, it's really flexible as to what you want to do. So, with yes, as with more complicated functions, it becomes self-evident as to which term, the x or the y, the extra terms need to belong. Uh, E.g. Now, <laughs> this is a simple one, right? This is a simple one, where it's where we've got the flexibility in place. You just watch what I'm going to do if you don't get what I've just said. Um, E.g. Name the transformations which change y equals x into y equals 2x plus 4. Here's approach 1, and then I'm going to do approach 2, where I approach it quite differently. Now, okay, we're saying that y equals x, that's the original function, and we're saying that y dashed equals 2x dash plus 4. That's the transformed function, yes? Now, I'm going to take those two equations there as being in equivalent form. I'm not going to move that 4, I'm not going to fiddle with it, okay? I'm just going to leave it there. Now, therefore, what am I saying? What am I saying? I'm saying if you equate like or equivalent terms, the y dash equals y and the 2x dash plus 4 equals x. Now, now making, um, basically making x dash the subject, you will get if you fiddle with that and make x dash the subject, you'll get that x dashed equals the half of x minus 2, right? Now, basically, you halve each x value here and you subtract 2 to get x dashed. Now, that tells you, that tells you what the transformation is. The y doesn't get transformed, but the x does. You've got to halve the x now, what's, how, do you, what do you, how do you say that in dilation lingo, guys? If you halve x, isn't that a dilation of a factor of a half from the y? Then you do a translation 
of two units in the negative x direction or two units to the left, right? Yeah, dilation factor of half of the y-axis followed by a translation of two units to the left. That is the translation that we applied to get to get from y equals x to y equals 2x plus 4. That's pretty simple, isn't it, right? You notice you've got to make the x dashed and the y dashed the subject to be able to read off the transformations to get from x to x dashed and y to y dashed respectively. That's what you have to do in the backwards technique. Approach 2. Now I'm going to, I'm going to fiddle with that second equation now. Do you see what I did? I've basically just fiddled around with it and I've basically just left the x dash on its own, subtracted 4 from both sides and divided both sides by 2. Now, if that's in equivalent form, <laughs> look what happens now. We could say that x dashed equals x, yes, and we could say that y dashed minus 4 over 2 equals y. Now, making x dashed and y dashed the subject, that means y dashed is 2y plus 4. Now, that's a different recipe for a transformation, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it? It's this, right? That doesn't get transformed in this approach. This one does. Now, how do you say that? Come on, you practice. Well, we're doubling y. That means a dilation of a factor of 2 from the x-axis. And then we're going to do a translation of 4 units in the positive y direction or up, right? Now... Do you see I've got completely different answers for approach 1 and approach 2? But the thing is, they are both ending up as the same transformed curve, which is, what was it again? y equals 2x plus 4. So, yes, you double each y value and add 4 to get y dash. So we've got a dilation of a factor of 2 from the x-axis followed by a translation of 4 units up. And they're both equivalent, guys. They're both, they are both equivalent in terms of the end result function that you... If you apply those recipes, those two individual recipes, one after the other, to the line y equals x, you'll still get the same end up and final destination function. They're equivalent. Okay? Isn't this mad, this stuff? You know, no wonder the students get confused. But look, I hope I've made it simple and easy for you to explain, to understand. Righto, this is a learned quick technique now. Here it comes. Uh, I don't recommend this, but hey, it's quick. And it's very effective and you can you can go very fast with it. But it doesn't bear much logic. You just have to learn uh, what to do. Okay, this technique is learned. Cookbook technique based on the foregoing logical. It is based on the foregoing logical method, by the way. But it is not my preferred technique, as it, uh, but it is included for the sake of completion because just about everybody under the sun uses it. Now, um, for the forwards technique, say, yes, you're given the original function and the transformations required. And you're, you're expected to come up with a transformed function. Now, it goes like this. E.g., if we take f of x equals x squared, determine the equation for the image of f of x after those things which we already considered earlier. A is a dilation of a factor of 3 from the x-axis. B is a dilation of a factor of 3 from the y-axis. Now, this, these are the learned rules, okay? For a dilation, you have to learn these rules. For a dilation of a factor of n from the x-axis, you replace y with y over n. For a dilation of a factor of n from the y-axis, you replace x with x over n, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Now, so for a, now it becomes very easy what to do. For a, we've got, what have we got? A dilation factor of 3 from the, from the x-axis, so therefore you've got that is our original statement. And we have, we have to replace y with y over 3, so therefore you get y over 3 equals f of x, we're not replacing the x with anything, we're replacing y with y over 3. So y over 3 equals f of x equals x squared, therefore solving for y, y will be 3 f of x equals 3, you're multiplying both sides, or <laughs> I don't know whether you say both sides, or all three terms, or the, the f of x and the x squared term by 3. So the image is 3 f of x equals 3 x squared. Are you right with that? That's it, guys. It was quick, wasn't it? Very quick. Very, very quick. It's sleek. So, uh, B, dilation of a factor of 3 from the y-axis. Well, in that case, you have to replace x with x over 3. And so, what do you get there? Come on, can you predict? What will the next line be? Yeah, it'll be y equals f of x over 3 equals x over 3 squared. Right? Are you replacing the x with x over 3. So don't be mistaken if it's x squared, it's not x squared over 3, it's x over 3 all squared. 
which means the image is f of x over 3 equals x squared over 9. That's your answer. Mighty fine. Yes, isn't it? It's nice and sleek, but, it, but look, it can come unstuck when they give you sort of, sort of funny camouflaged things to do, you know, from left field, and, you know, when you're trying, when you're trying to apply these, these cookbook rules, you've really got to think about what you're doing, and you can come unstuck if you haven't thought about it really deeply. Uh, here we go, backwards, uh, what, oh yes, this is a backwards learned technique. Given the original and transformed function, and we're required to come up with the transformations which have been applied, all right, backwards, so this is what you do now. Determine the factor of dilation when the graph of y equals, this is the one we did before, root 5x is obtained by dilating the graph of y equals root x, yes? Now, we have to come up with the steps, the steps. Now, what you do there, oh, yes, from the x-axis, from the y-axis. Now, the learned rules, the learned rules were for a dilation of a factor of n from the x-axis, replace y with y over n. For a dilation of a factor of n from the y-axis, we're replacing x with x over n. We said that before. Now, then, the, the learn, these learned rules, we read directly from the transformed function in the order of dilations, then reflections, then translations. And this is known as the DRT, dilation, reflection, translation, or Dr. T, Dr. T technique. You have to do it in that order, otherwise you're going to come unstuck, guys. Okay? That's the order you have to do them. Now, NB, yeah, DRT works fine if transforming a simple original function into a more complicated one. However, this is where I'm, this is my reservation with this technique. It can become very confusing in doing the reverse because it is a cookbook non-logical method. Now, in other words, if you were trying to work out the, di the, the steps involved in translating or transforming sine of 2x plus pi over 2 back to sine x, that's going from the kind of like the complicated to the simple. This method gets really, really kind of hairy and sort of out there and really, you know, you, you can get very messed up. And guess what they like to do to you in the exam? Just that. <laughs> of course they do, because they're sadistic. Now, here's um, number A. From the AX, from the x-axis. All right, so from the x-axis... From, uh, from the x-axis means the y is affected... Is, is affected and therefore we're going to write it so that the y term is affected, all right? So we can re rewrite that equation, that transformed equation, as y over root 5 equals root x. Now, okay, so we've replaced y with y over root 5, haven't we? Yes, haven't we? From the first rule, that's a dilation of a factor of root 5 from the x-axis. You see how simple it is? We're just reading it off, reading it off, okay? And the B part, now what was that again? Oh, yeah, now we're going to do it uh, from the y-axis. We have to express it as a transformation from the y-axis. So the x is affected, as we discovered a couple of screens ago when we were doing it with the, the preferred method. So therefore, we're going to rewrite this transformed equation just as if the x is the one that's affected. So there it is. Oh, gracious me! What's that? Well, um, what it is... What it is, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Now look, it's 5x under the square root sign. Now you have to write, you have to rewrite that, ladies and gentlemen, or I have to rewrite it, in other words, I get completely messed up, as x over something, because we're talking about x over n. A dilation to a factor of n from the y-axis replace x with x over n, so I need x over something. So 5x is x over one-fifth, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> you need to go back to year eight, no offence, and, and rediscover your what happens when you divide by a fraction thing, right? You invert it and multiply. So if we're going backwards, we go from 5x to x over a fifth. Now that tells you, ladies and gentlemen, basically that we've got a transform, a, we've got a dilation of a factor of one-fifth from the y-axis. That's what it tells you. It's a dilation of a factor of a fifth from the y-axis. Yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's the end. Well, how did you like all that? That's the first in the series of dilation, then what's coming up is reflection, and then translations. Wasn't it fun? Now, there was an awful lot that I went through in that, in that video. So, look, do yourself a favour and have a jolly good look at it. If you don't quite get it and just mull over it, you'll need to think about it very deeply, like I have. 
I thought about this for many months, riding my bike backwards and forwards to school, day after day, <laughs> thinking about this stuff. I know, I know, I need to get alive. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening and bye for now.